Hey, what's up? This is Sully from Godsmack. Strap on those boots, baby, because you are now in the trenches of the war room with the one and only Mistress Carrie right here on the Mistress Carrie podcast. What's up? This is Joe Rogan, and you're listening to Mistress Carrie. I have so lovely pretty eyes. Hey, this is Brent from Shinedown, and you're listening to Mistress Carrie. Hey, Carrie, go put your brow on, girl. Hey, this is Steven Tyler, and you'll be listening to the baddest bitch in Boston, Mistress Carrie. What's up? This is Aaron from Stan. And you're listening to Mistress Carrie. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Grohl from the Food Fighters, and you're listening to the one, the only, Mistress Carrie. Hey, this is David from the Band Disturbed, and you're listening to the baddest bitch in Boston, Mistress Carrie. Hi, Bruce Dickinson here from Iron Maiden. Yes, indeed. Miss Whiplash herself, Mrs. Carrie, is here to um, unchain your brain. Hi, this is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You're listening to Mistress Carrie. This is Dennis Leary. You are listening to my favorite, Mistress Carrie. Hey, this is Corey from Stone Sour, and you're listening to. You have the privilege of listening to Mr. Scary. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's Mistress Carrie reporting for duty from MCHQ for a bonus episode of the Mistress Carrie podcast. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Digital Federal Credit Union, better known as DCU. And so far this year, DCU has donated to 119 food banks and pantries with total donations of over $2.1 million. Their commitment to the community doesn't stop at feeding the hungry. They have passionately supported numerous school programs, hospitals, veterans organizations, and other worthy causes that are doing their part to help individuals and families in need. Veterans organizations provide important and ongoing support to the brave men and women who have served our country, recognizing the special sacrifices that both the veterans and their families have made. DCU's goal is to honor and support our military heroes by continuing to fund new opportunities in the areas of health, employment, and housing through partnerships with local, regional, and national organizations. Giving back is central to what they do. And I know this because I've been working on these kinds of projects with DCU going on two decades now. And I have seen the way they operate, and I am honored to have them as a sponsor of the Mistress Carrie podcast. Okay, this is a bonus episode of the Mistress Carrie podcast. And I had a chance to sit down and talk to Daniel Laskowitz, otherwise known as DL from Bad Wolves. Their massive Kill the Noise tour with Papa Roach and Hollywood Undead went on sale today. And that tour features a date on March 24th at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut, which, by the way, is kind of a hometown show for DL since he's a Western mass guy. So us mass holes sat down first thing in the morning over a cup of coffee to talk about the tour, to talk about what it was like for DL joining an established band like Bad Wolves, releasing their album Dear Monsters and their first single Lifeline hitting number one on the rock charts. We talked about touring and songwriting, and it was really cool to get to know him. This tour is going to be insane. So allow me to introduce you to DL from Bad Wolves. This meeting is being recorded. Let me hit record so I can put you on the record. All righty. Good morning. How are you? Good morning to you. I'm having coffee with a fellow mass hole. That's the way to start the day. Cheers. Perfect. What do you got there? Some Dunkin'? Come on, man. Of course. Come on. Now we already know. Everybody gives me the trouble because I'm the only guy that goes to L.A. looking for a Dunkin'. Everybody's like, what are you doing? And it's really hard to find. But there are a few, though. I I did find them. You got to have the app. That's the trick. Do you have the Dunks app? Yeah. That's how you do it? Yes. Yeah. And you got to go out of your way to do it. Uh, Yeah. But I don't care. Yep. I'll do. I'll go way out of my way for it. I like uh you know, I can't do the Starbucks. I just, I like my, my regular Dunkin'. Yeah. Just, and, yeah. and I love, um, I love people from, from not New England that are like, oh, it's this, it's that. And it's like, look, we're angry people. We want our coffee to make us angry too. Yep. And we're, and we're creatures of habit. That's so right. If I can have my Dunkin', let me get it. That's right. So are you in LA now or do you get to go home for the holidays? Um, no, I'm not. I'm actually in my home studio right now. Uh, in, in the next hour, I'll have the guys from All That Remains here because I'm working on their new record. So nice. Yep. So- and then I will be I'll be in L.A. Uh, mid-January to start doing the rehearsals for Bad Wolves. So. Yeah. So I was going to say, so just because 
you're the singer of Bad Wolves down now doesn't mean that all the producing stuff that you've been doing stops. No, no. It's just we're just we're putting on layers. That's all we're doing. Yeah. Just um still doing the producing and still playing guitar myself and yep, just a little bit of everything. Well, after the new year, I want to have you come back on the show so that we can have a more in-depth conversation about all of this kind of stuff, but because I don't get that much time with you today, um, anything happened this year that we need to talk about? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, not too much. It's been a quiet year. <laughs> Wrong. Yeah, it's been, um, especially with the band and everything, and we hit yeah. the ground sprinting, and it, yeah. it's, been a, it's been a whirlwind, but it's been really fun and really exciting, um, not only for myself, but the band as well. You know, new uh, new chapter in the band, and new music, new record, um, new everything. It's just yeah. nice, nice, shiny new. We, we came out of the detail shop as a band. So yeah, it's a little bit crazy. So the first thing I want to ask you, um, how did they tell you that you, that you got the gig? Like, did they do something to, or was it just like a text and it's just like, okay, you're the dude. Like, let's just go. It was pretty chill. Um, <laughs> I, 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 it was pretty chill, honestly. Yeah. Like, I wish I had this like crazy cool story, but it was pretty chill. I, you know, um, it was just the typical uh, tryout process. You know, I, I went, I tried out, um, we hung out, we loved each other, but it was like the band still wanted to go on that extensive search and just exhaust all those options and really like stretch their legs and, and take this opportunity to see, see what kind of talent was out there. And, and they did that. And I ended up being the first guy and I ended up being the last guy. So it's kind of cool how that worked out. But yeah, I think, you know, it was like a Friday night and uh, Chris and John were, were out together partying a little bit and, and they called me and they were like, Hey, we've, uh, we've come down to the last three and we, we, we think we want you. So I, I was, it was cool. You know, it was just a Friday night. I was chilling on my couch. I was like, Oh, uh, let me call you back in like five minutes. I just need to like, <laughs> let that soak in for a second. Let but, me marinate yeah, in was, the juices pretty- of this for a sec. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty chill. And then, you know, from there, it, uh, you know, snowballed. So I think a week later, I was out tracking the, the new record. And we've been working since on little things here and there, prepping for the, the tour. We were uh, up until, you know, October 29th. We were doing a lot of work prepping for the new record and everything and, and getting ready for the release of that. And now that that's finally out and we can, like, take that sigh of, like, oh, it's like such a relief for everybody to to be able to hear that record in its entirety. And now we can like really focus on the live aspect, which um, like I said, you know, in January I'll be going out there and we'll be dialing in the set and, and all the little, the little things that come with that. So. Well, I, I've yep. known the guys from Bad Wolves for a while and you know, the, the, the daunting task of having success and then having to make a lineup change. I yeah. think everyone from ACDC to Van Halen, you know, Alice in Chains, like the bands that have been able to do it, there's got to be this sense of stress about how the fans are going to deal with everything. Can you talk about what it's been like for you to have the fans wrap their arms around you the way that they have? It's overwhelming, honestly, you know, um, yeah, without like getting too sappy about it, it's it's just uh, oh, get sappy. It's know, okay. Oh, come on! I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but seriously, like it, it's been so awesome. And um, you know, there's both sides of it. There's always going to be somebody that likes the the former guy. There's going to be people that like me, and and we just hope that um, you know, both sides alike can kind of just meet in the middle and like the band for the band, like you know, moving forward, we, we don't want this to be a band that's all about the front man because it's like, you know, so many times you see that now and, and I get it. It's a thing, you know, uh, in rock history, it's like the front man, he's the man, but like we, we definitely, there's so many personalities in this band that, that really haven't been explored. And, um, and there's just, there's just so much talent in this band that like every person in this band could be a front man. Everybody, everybody in this band could be a producer, like everybody in this band deserves that spotlight. So I think, you know, moving forward, it's just, we want to make sure that it's a collaborative effort and we're just a team. So um, it feels good. And it's awesome to know that people are stoked on the new record and they're, they're stoked on the the vocal change. Cause you know, it is, it is a little bit different. Um, 
even though the the former singer and I, we kind of like live in that same kind of lower register. Um, I do bring some, some new stuff stylistically to the table. So, um, you know, with the new record that kind of shows in songs like Springfield summer and, and stuff like that. So we're able to do some things that the band may have not done in the past. And that's exciting and fun. And I think the fans uh, recognize that as well. It's got to make you feel great too. When you get the call and you're like lifelines, number one, like what? Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Like Western mass, hardcore kid, no expectations coming into this. And, and that happens. And it's just like, all right, well, wonderful. I think we're doing something right. So, um, yeah, the future looks bright and 2022 is going to be a loud, exciting year for Bad Wolves. They obviously are treating you like the FNG, though, because um, <laughs> when, it, when, it, when it comes to dishing out responsibilities, um, Doc gets to make funny internet videos of Budweiser WhatsApp videos, and you get to talk to me. Yeah, but you know what? I'd rather talk to you. Uh, I, I'm not really. Yeah, hey, oh. uh, <laughs> you know, what? I'm just. I don't know. I'm not like. I'm the dad in the band now. You know, like you know, I'm the guy with two kids in the band, and like, I'm not really that funny. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not the interesting person that everybody wants me to be. So, I guess it's it's better for me to have these conversations than like do the funny guy stuff you know it is what it is we all wear a different hat and we wear them well the last time i saw bad wolves ironically they were on tour with papa roach and so um not only to get the love from the fans but can you talk Mm -hmm. about what that camaraderie and friendship with guys like papa roach and hollywood undead like what that means to you because you guys are going out on this tour it starts march 1st and it the tour's on sale today yes um so that really just makes life a lot easier on the road when it's just that kind of friendship like friendly everybody's cool kind of atmosphere on tour everybody you know it's it it's not as much of a working stiff environment although um i don't think any of us really know what to expect in march uh, especially with like covid and, and kind of, we're i know that we're going to be kind of doing that like bubble thing and and it's going to be weird but um it's it's uh relieving to know that we're going to be going out with a bunch of cool people that that all have the same mindset and, and uh so yeah i think that's the, the biggest part of it is just knowing that everybody's going to have a good time no matter what we're presented with, with this new uh, version of touring. So when you go into tour rehearsals and you guys start working out the set list and stuff, um, my assumption, correct me if I'm wrong, is that all the, all of the bad wolves music from whoever was singing it is going to be incorporated into the set. Is, is that the way it's going to be? Yes. Um, So like we've, we've talked about this back and forth kind of, quite a bit and um you know especially especially these first couple tours kind of coming back and and reconnecting with the fans and stuff um i think you know we 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 all kind of feel like that's that's pretty important just to not abandon what the band has built because you know it's not it's not only who was singing it but it's like it's their music too so it's it's it would be a shame to abandon the old material so we definitely um i think moving forward we have talked about maybe playing some songs from the older catalog that they normally wouldn't have played. Um, I know consumerist came up as a fun one. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's so many fun ones that haven't been played live yet. So we're going to kind of dig into the catalog a little bit and see what we can do with that. But, um, I know really, you know, moving forward, especially for me, um, we're really excited to play the new stuff because that's just like what's fresh on the plate. And we haven't even really got to play it in a room together yet as a band and hear it like loud um, with the live instruments and stuff. So that's really exciting for us. So we're definitely excited to get those dear monster songs uh, and this in the set and kind of dominate the set a little bit, but we will be playing older material. You bring up COVID and, and you know, the difficulties that, that, that COVID can bring with touring and trying to get out there with the fans. It's been such a weird experience and the world is a different place outside of COVID, you know, politically like it's just been a really hard last couple of years. And something that keeps coming up with all the artists that I talk to um, is about how the rock community has always been able to kind of find a way to transcend all of that. 
Because once we all enter that venue, we are the land of misfit toys. We're the people that don't belong anywhere else, but they're together. Do you feel that way? Yes, absolutely. Especially like you said, once you're in that building together, it's just like, it's hard not to feel like you're a family, right? So, um, and I think, you know, especially the man moving forward and stuff, we, we th- going to a show, like the one night off, you know, especially to the casual listener, the one night off a week that you have to get away from your sh- crappy job. You can swear, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> your shitty, your shitty fucking job. And You're from Massachusetts. You, wanna... <laughs> you have to be able to swear, dude. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what the, uh, the format was. Yeah, you're and dead. so like, yeah, so you just, that one night, that Friday, that Saturday, whatever that you're looking forward to, to get away from your shitty job and like, just let loose and get away from all that drama. Like I I know that that's how music has always been for me. I don't want to go to a venue and hear a band talk about politics. I don't want to go to a venue and have somebody preach to me. I want to go and have fun, have a couple drinks, listen to those songs that I love and sing along and then leave having half of your voice and going back to work the next day with a hoarse throat and just like knowing that, that you let it all out that night. So that's important. And, and you, you did, you hit the nail on the head that it's, uh, it's definitely just a family vibe when you get in that venue. So, and it's, it's been important. So, it's been so hard cause we've all been so disconnected. So like the shows that I've been able to go to just recently, it's like, Oh my God, it's so weird being around so many people and to be able to like, right? the, the arm next to you touches you and you're like, ah! Swift. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. fire extinguisher yeah it's but yeah. It, but i've left with this amazing feeling like oh okay personal connection it's a thing yeah yeah i think everybody's just uh depending dependent on how you know isolated you've been and, and where you're at on that i think everybody kind of needs that release and that connection now and i know the band and i we really do too we're you know so freaking excited to get out on tour and regardless i mean never mind playing just hang out with everybody and and say hello and reconnect with the fans like i said and um yeah it's so important and uh we haven't had enough of that in the past couple years so it's time i can empathize with the new chapter you know (laughs) coming out of the ashes of waf after all those years getting back on the radio being able to kind of move forward It feels like there is this amazing optimism for 2022, and it feels like it's going to be the busiest concert year ever. We none of us are getting any sleep next year. Seriously, yeah. I mean, just March alone, I think. Like in the past couple days, I've just kind of been keeping my ear to the ground. It's like I just noticed four amazing tours that got announced in March. So you're right. Yeah, it's it's going to be a loud, exciting, busy year. So. We're all looking forward to it. Well, we I know I am. We can't wait to get you in town. Um, the local date uh, is March 24th at Mohegan, and you're, you know, you're a Western Uncle Mass Phil. guy. Like that's that's a hometown show. Like who doesn't want to go and run around a casino and play in a giant arena with Papa Roach and Hollywood Undead? It's gonna be so fun. It is gonna be fun. <laughs> I will see you there for sure. I love it. I love it. Can't wait to see you there. Then it was so great to see you. Enjoy your. Enjoy your dunks, kid. I'll see you. I'm I'm going to have a refill in a minute there. <laughs> have a good time with Love the All it. That Remains guys. And obviously, congratulations on everything. And we'll see you next year when you guys get out on the road. I'll tell them you said hello. Thank you so much for having me. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. You too. We'll see you. I'll see you soon. Bye. There he is, DL from Bad Wolves. The entire tour with Papa Roach and Hollywood Undead went on sale today. And uh, that includes the March 24th date at the Mohegan Sun Arena. And you can check the events calendar at mistresscarry.com for all the ticket info. And if you're looking for DL online, you're looking for Bad Wolves online, you're looking for all of my links, you can check the show notes of this episode of the podcast. You'll also find a link for the corresponding playlist so that you can hear all of the new Bad Wolves music and hear the guys from Papa Roach, Hollywood Undead, and more. Thanks to our sponsor, Digital Federal Credit Union. You can find them at dcu.org. And this holiday season, if you're looking for that last-minute gift, you can give them the gift of Mistress Carrie. 
Just go to mistresscarry.com and shop in the online store. And yes, there is still time to get stuff before the holiday. And if you liked what you heard, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss anything from the Mistress Carrie podcast. New full-length episodes come out every Wednesday. Plus, every weekday, you get the sit rep. All of your rock news, music headlines, and industry info in less than five minutes. And this week's full-length episode features Tyler Connolly from Theory of a Dead Man. The Mistress Carrie podcast, a proud member of the Pantheon Podcast Network.